joint prosthesis heart valves and the cutaneous that is the skin wounds in this cases on this such kinds of external devices medical devices or the implants these organisms they form they grow they form they secrete polysaccharides and protein they form a slime layer and the organisms remains hidden towards this and as a result the drug is not able to reach that particular organism organisms like staphylococcus aureus staphylococcus epidermidis pseudomonas and e coli klebsiella mycobacteria these are the prominent one which shows these kinds of phenotypic drug resistance in biofilms next comes multi drug resistance multi drug resistance means what some organisms they exhibit resistance towards more than one antibiotics that means the routinely used antibiotics most of them they do not have any effect such organisms are called as superbugs superbugs in a sense that they have got a ability immense ability to resist almost all kinds of drugs the example is very prominent for example recently mentioned you must have read it in many newspaper over a year back a superbug called new delhi metallo beta lactamase 1 ndm1 this organism was first of all reported in sweden from a person who was originating from india that is new delhi and that is by the name new delhi metallo beta lactamase basically <coughs> carbapenase is the drug of choice for the treatment of infections which are resistance to ordinary antibiotics that is when the infection does not respond to a routine antibiotics a person is given carbapenem antibiotics but this organism produced the enzyme carbapenase as a result this organism was resistant to the antibiotic which was given to the patients which showed resistance to other antibiotics it means it is a kind of a superbug this was first discovered in klebsiella pneumoniae and e coli in 2008 later on the same kind of superbug ndm1 has been reported in other countries that includes pakistan and certain other asian countries now <clears throat> let us come to the evolution of resistant to antibiotic as you can see them in the figure the sulfonamides were deployed or they were discovered in 1930s and within 10 years the first resistance was observed penicillin for that matter was discovered in 1943 and by 46 1946 within 3 years the resistance was observed so you can see here in the table that within a very short time the organism evolved the mechanism for resistance therefore as we can see this in the graphical representations the landscape is changing for the numbers of approved antibacterial agents during 83 to 87 on the left hand bar shows the highest number of agents which were approved but as 2003 5 comes and as 2008 comes there were no antibacterial agents which were approved because it showed the drug resistance so as you can see here the red line shows the increase in resistance the number of approved drug as you can see them in bar it is showing a decrease in resistance so the landscape is changing that you can say <clears throat> now what leads to this evolution of resistance basically the antibiotic use it exerts a very strong selective pressure that is to say whenever an antibiotic is used among a huge population of a pathogen the susceptible organisms will be killed 
the resistant individuals resistant pathogens will continue to live and these organisms will now try to grow even when the antibiotic is present and within a short time as you know that bacteria divides every almost or every 20 minutes within few hours or within few days these resistant population will be profusely spreading in the body so in an environment where you use a large number of antibiotic these resistant alleles that is the genes they spread very rapidly and this problem is compounded by the horizontal gene transfer as we have already seen either by plasmids or by transposons or by conjugation transformation and transduction or even by cross duction as you can see them in diagrams the point which i explained to you the red color bacteria bug in the center is only one but the green color which were considered to be of the same type they were sensitive so when there were antibiotic was present these green color bacteria were destroyed only red color survived and in doing so after some time after two generations from one it became four then these organisms continue to thrive in that environment and they continue to grow even when the antibiotic was absent so when the antibiotic was absent these organisms continue to perpetuate and is a, as a result you can see that in a huge population only few organisms were antibiotic sensitive while others were mostly antibiotic resistant this is a phenomenon which is known as the antibiotic exerts a strong selective pressure as you can see this in graph the number of organisms initial antibiotic organisms here they were very high but as the antibiotic is used the number decreases slowly but if you can consider it here the red line it shows the antibiotic resistant population which was less in the initial stages slowly and slowly it increased after several generation and it reached the climax it is almost as number is as large as the original population of sensitive organisms so this indicates that how the antibiotic resistant organisms spread in the community or in the culture now what are the causes of drug resistance this will be explained to you by madam the causes of drug resistance okay thank you sir now actually a uh, lot of things are being discussed to you people and you must be you must have realized that how uh, dangerous it is when the resistance towards the antibiotic develops in pathogens now again uh, we would like to see that what are the real actual causes which leads to the development of drug resistance this is is a very important aspect to understand that nowadays every one or two or three individual you ask them they say that they are using this kind of antibiotic so wide use or over use of antibiotics or misuse we can say misuse of antibiotic is always there leading to the drug resistance not only this but the use of the antibiotics in cattle in farming has also led to the development of resistant varieties of pathogens apart from this it has been again observed and surveyed that many people who travel a lot from one country to another one state to another if they are infected with some kind of pathogen which carries a resistant gene then this kind of people when they travel to some other country they carries the pathogen with a resistant gene and they transfer this kind of pathogen to some other individual so this is how because of increased globalization the resistance has increased not only this but the settings in the hospital has also given rise to the development of the bacteria who are found to be resistant to antibiotic so this is how the antibiotics are either used excessively or we can say it is the misuse of antibiotic for the treatment of infection or for the treatment of diseases well if you can see here 
that during 19 and 1940s and 50s the antibiotics which were used which were discovered in the initial stages were very extremely effective but as the time went on these antibiotics they lost their charm that is to say the organisms slowly and slowly developed resistance this was because of several things one of the important factor was antibiotics were also used in agriculture or they were used for dosing the cattle with antibiotics to increase the beef to increase the yield <coughs> all these factors led to the antibiotic resistance because by 1970s the world was full with or it was wash awash with antibiotics because large tons of antibiotics were produced and they were released into environment for example according to one estimate 9280 million kg per year of antibiotics is released into the environments into the world which is enough for 25 billion full treatment courses on an average it comes to four courses per human being per year this is probably 10 times more antibiotics are used in agriculture to treat people that is the antibiotics are more used for treatment of plants and disease to control the disease and levy in 1997 estimated that for animal treatments or as an animal supplements 30 times more antibiotics are being used as compared to human beings now these <coughs> effects of antibiotic misuse are two the first one that apart from treating the invading infectious pathogens these antibiotics also eliminate the normal flora present in the host and as a result of this this leads to the disturbance of the diversity of the ecosystem and the natural balance between the susceptible and resistant organisms is lost then comes the self medication basically this is one of the greatest evil which the society faces if a person gets sick then he does not visit the clinical clinic uh, doctors clinicians he thinks that by taking the drugs which are sold over the counter or by using the common drugs which somebody else has been using it if i take one or two doses i'll be okay i'll be fine so this is called as a self medication and as a result of this without diagnosis the drugs are being taken which leads to the drug resistance apart from this the sub optimal levels of antimicrobials what is sub optimal levels of the antimicrobials it means that right dose at right time is not being taken as a result of which the mic level is not maintained in the human body so that leads to sub optimal levels of antimicrobial as a result the microbes which carry the resistance genes they multiply and for a layman we can say what he should do he should reduce the inappropriate prescription of antibiotics we should increase the public awareness so that the diseases cannot be cured that all diseases you cannot cure it with antibiotics then you should also reduce the use of antibiotics in agriculture as well as, as well as in animal feeds and to increase the number of patients and insist them that they finish their course of antibiotics <coughs> apart from that we should also restrict minimize the use of new antibiotics and whenever possible the vaccination and the fast treatment or prophylaxis 
should be increased. Now, what are the key microbial antimicrobial resistance factors which prevents the development of new antimicrobial resistance? As you can see here that whenever a susceptible pathogen is there, whenever infection takes place and when we use start using the antimicrobials, then all these things or antibiotic resistance can be prevented by preventing infections, effective diagnosis and effective treatment, optimal use of antimicrobials and finally to prevent the transmission of these pathogens from one individual to the another. Now last thing that is the managing of drug resistance problems will be discussed by Madam. Okay. Now, uh, you have uh, learned so many things about the drug resistance. Now, the question arises, is it, do we have any solution to manage this kind of drug resistance? Do we have any uh, thing with the help of which we can uh, limit the spread of this kind of drug resistance? To some extent, we can definitely uh, restrict the spread of drug resistance. How it can be done? It can be done with the help of uh, better uh, treatment uh, strategies, better immunization programs, improved hygiene and nutrition. Even with by establishing the antibiotic resistance surveillance programs, we can definitely manage the drug resistance problems. Even the we can aware the public by giving the education, even the health care professionals can be educated for this kind of management so that the drug resistance can be minimized and the people live a better life. Okay. Apart from this, uh, we can always use the antibiotics as uh, rightly said that the use of antibiotics at right time for right period is very necessary to prevent the drug resistance. Then the combination of antibiotics can be used to pro, uh, prevent the drug resistance. Mobilization of host defense mechanism, I mean the boosting of the immunity can also be helpful. And not, um, lastly, the use of normal bacterial flora can also be helpful in managing the drug resistance. Now, lastly, I end up this discussion by leaving one question. You can think about it. Are we using the right drug for the right bug? Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, friends. In the end, I would like to acknowledge the Commissioner, Department of Higher Education, Government of